Hey there, welcome. And we are going to talk about the idea of Jody Arias and Nicole Kessinger being different sides of the same coin. And take a look energetically at how these two women have actually occurred to many of us in the world. And also, by looking at them, it gives us an opportunity to look inside ourselves and say, wow, what part of me am I relating to? Am I resembling that I'm resisting? So before I get started, I want to just say, first of all, that welcome, welcome to those of you who have not joined us before. And one of the things I'm trying to really incorporate here on my channel is a real sense of community and support. And what I mean by that is no attacking. So that means no snarky comments. And if you do have them, I'll probably just hide you from the channel. Now, if that happens to you and you feel, oh no, you can always look up the top at the about section and under, there is an email to contact us and you can let us know, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I think I've been banned <laughs> and we will unban you. Uh, I don't necessarily do all of them. My assistant does sometimes and so that can happen. So that said, the other thing is that I, my intention is never to blame the victim or blame either of these women in this conversation. My intention is to really look at what I'm perceiving as actions and what I'm perceiving as energetic damage or if you will emotional damage that we can all see in these people and how that relates to us and really how we can better communicate our our ideas with each other and so the first thing i want to say before i get into either one of these juicy conversations is well, actually this is the second thing i'm going to say the second thing i'm going to say is that um when we look at the idea of conversation, there's either open or closed conversations. And an open conversation is, is, is asking a question. It's kind of inquiry. It's a way of saying, are you meaning this? Because I'm hearing this. And that gives a person a chance to say, no, you completely misread me. So what I like about that is a lot of times I'll say, you know, I'm hearing, like when I read this, it's coming across as this. And someone will go, oh no, I meant this. Or, oh no, I did mean snarky. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> at least I know your intention. So that's an open conversation. At least that person is telling me the truth. And you know, in our community, I'd rather everyone remember, you know, honesty without kindness is cruelty. So, you know, I had a cousin when I was little, he used to say, can I be brutally honest? And I'd be like, you know what? No, I don't want to be brutally honest. Can you do it nicely? And she couldn't, and we didn't have a relationship. So <laughs> when I say all this to you, it's, it's by way of offering you the opportunity to also look at what a closed conversation is. And I think that is more of the conversation that we're used to having on social media. The conversation around, you're wrong, I think you're an idiot, how could you say that? Those are closed conversations. And why do I say open versus closed? Because a closed conversation is going to shut somebody down. It's not going to open them up. So if I ask, I'm, I'm interpreting it this way, is that what you mean to say? That person goes, oh, yeah or no, but it's open. I know if that person's being mean to me, and I've had maybe two or three people, and I'm like, okay, you know, bye, because I don't want to get into a pissing match with somebody. Why? You know, it just isn't fun. It isn't enjoyable. So on the other side, when we look at an open conversation, we're really, look, excuse me, closed, the closed conversation, we're really looking at what happens when we shut someone down, when we try to just shut them up because we don't want to hear what they have to say, or because we want to force our opinion or ideas on someone else? That's closed because what it does is, first of all, it alienates you. It's a lower vibration and you don't feel good, right? How many times have you said to someone, like I noticed on our feeds, some of the feeds, people say, well, I'm having this disease or what have you, I'm going through this. And I can't tell you how kind it is when people say, oh my gosh, I'm going to pray for you or thank you or God bless or whatever it is they say, it is in such a kind footprint. And what that does is it raises the vibrational conversation. So as I say that to you, ooh, I'm getting truth bumps. As I say that to you now, what I'd like to make sure we're doing is in this dialogue that I'm going to have with you about Jodi Arias 
and Nicole Kessinger is really around the idea of looking at lower vibrational energy, higher vibrational energy, and how we relate to it. And remember, how we relate to the issue is the issue. All right, let's get started. So the first thing, oh, I forgot to tell everybody. Okay, well, I'm going to get started, and then I'll give you a little in the middle kind of stuff, but I do have a Patreon now and all this kind of stuff, and it's just fun. So you'll see it somewhere up above in one of the links. Okay, so when we look at Jodi Arias, let's start with her because as I go into her energy, one of the things that is indelibly imprinted in my mind is the murder scene and the scene of where they found Travis in his bathroom. And for some of you, if you watched my original Jodi Arias uh, video, that I did a few weeks ago, you're going to notice that one of Travis's greatest fears was taking showers because his mother, he would get the floor wet and his mother would abuse him or I want to say um, hit him or beat him for she thought pissing on the floor. That's what she accused him of. So he was very scared of being in showers. So the idea of her stabbing him to death is not only horrific, but it's also even, it starts to get even worse. Uh, there are many things that associate that crime. So when we look at some of the similarities, and when we look at energetic similarities, I wanna just validate something for you guys. They're probably real. So when we look at the idea that Travis had to turn his back to his mother when, when his mother was beating him, the idea that he turned his back and most of his stab wounds were in his back, that tells you a lot. So this is a man that did not fight back. He did not um, abuse Jody. He, he was just probably in shock. But now let's look at Nicole Kessinger. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up both in, in a very distinct way. So bear with me. Nicole Kessinger is a, when I first saw it, okay, when I first saw everything, I had a very different take than I do now. When I first saw it, I really thought, oh, this girl, she got involved with a guy who was a murderer, how terrible, oops. It happens, you know, they got into something, okay. But then I started watching, and I started recognizing that emotional damage is very real. And I'm noticing, when we look at Nicole Kessinger, and we look at, I, I know a lot of people have mentioned her voice, okay? I'm just going to kick off my shoes and, and sit comfortably. Okay, so a lot of people will mention her voice, and they'll say, oh my gosh, her voice. It was, and, and then other people say, oh, how can you say that about her voice? That's so mean. And it's like, well, sometimes the, the first thing we hear growing up, that first, first thing is sound. We hear, before we're even looking around us, really, we're hearing the voices of our parents. We're hearing. And so, unless, obviously, unless someone's deaf, and then they have other senses. But in this case, when you talk about her voice, and I understand it coming from that background of, of um, voiceover. So now, when we talk about these two women, right, her story, Nicole, when she was in with the cops, it was almost as if, this was her moment. Like she was really like, oh, I don't care about him. You know, I think he was more serious than me. And what I found very interesting is, and we all know that's BS because at the end of the day, you know, you don't look up wedding dresses of somebody who you're casual with. And I don't think there was anything casual about Nicole Kessinger or the way she bombed that marriage. Now, I'm going to say a couple things that I want to be clear about, because I feel that Chris knew at any given moment he could have turned his back on that, and he didn't, all right? So I'm not trying to blame NK. That's not the point of this. The point is that there is something missing energetically in NK and Jody Arias. Now, we know that we can, listen, we can say till the cows come home, everybody's narcissistic here, okay? But let's go a little deeper than that and let's look at, let's look at NK as being extremely damaged. 
Now, obviously she had told her friend, what we know is she told her friend that he was married, but he was going to leave uh, his wife. And also, she also said to Chris that it doesn't matter what she thinks, I'm not leaving you. And they also, now there's other parts of the crime here that are like, however, when I look at the part she played, this is a woman that, and when we find this out, it becomes even more, you know, she was trying to downplay their relationship. Now, why would that be? Well, because in 30 days, these two people had like a relationship that, and we've seen this, by the way, if you've watched Snapped and you've watched some killer couple shows, you can see like these people get together and in three weeks they're robbing banks. I mean, you know, this, this is not that uncommon that, that two, I want to say energetically really damaged people, we can call them bad people or what have you. I, you know, I don't think necessarily that's, that, that can be fitting all the time, but these two energetically damaged people have gotten together and they are just like causing emotional havoc. Now, Chris gave us some signs, whether or not you believe Chris Watts, but he did say some things that I don't believe would necessarily, he would, he would have a reason to lie about. Like, you know, he had to talk her off the ledge. Now, him talking her off the ledge is only gonna make him look good. Think about that. So for him, that's gonna be like, well, she needed me, right? Hmm. Now, one of the things that has been bantered about a little bit is, you know, perhaps Nicole was bipolar or perhaps she was this. I can tell you right now that energetically I can look at her and this woman has serious, serious daddy issues. She is, she has a damage and I'm just speaking again, this is an opinion. She has a damage that I guarantee the fact that he was available, she got to say, well, I really don't know right? Because think about this. We know he wasn't available, but she was getting him closer and closer. In fact, he was telling her, I'm going to leave my wife. In fact, he's about to tell Shanann that he's in love with someone else. Now, before we get into that, let's stay on NK. For her, this little entity, suddenly she's always been number two. She's always been second place. Um, we know she's been number two, but, um, but she's always been second place. She has never really gotten the attention she needs from daddy. Now, I know the therapist who can say this better than me, but at the end of the day, I don't know about you, but every single woman I know who's had a solid relationship with her father, I really haven't seen her lower herself and her standards to the degree that Jody Arias and Nicole Kessinger have. And it's funny because I was talking to a friend of mine about this the other day and I said, cause I have, you know, some really close girlfriends. And I said, I said to one of my friends, I was like, you know, it's interesting because I notice all my girlfriends have really solid relationships with their dads. And if they don't, it's kind of like a, um, they're more caretakers in my life, but I'm not really as talking business and all that. And she went, you're right. I did have a great relationship with my dad. And then she named a couple other people we both know. And I said, yeah. And she said, oh. And I said, the opposite works with men. So if you know that a man has a difficult mother, tread lightly, go slowly. And obviously we can say that about Shanann, right? We can obviously look and go, wow, she had signs way early on right? But here's the thing that happens. Most people don't know that. Most people energetically are not working on themselves. They go into life with just life. You know, they, they don't have the equipment. We're not teaching this stuff in school. We're throwing around terminology that people go, oh yeah, that person's this. And no one wants to be labeled that. So no one's going to call somebody that unless something's happened. Now, for example, Cindy Watts may be a certain thing. I don't know that she's that. She, I don't know if she would. And here's the thing. It's more about your own witnessing, right? So observing how people are, observing their behavior. And I remember a woman called me once and said, I don't know, you know, it's just, he's not around very much. She was going on. And I said, where are his boots? She went, what? Because I kind of like changed her all day. What do you mean? I said, where are his boots? 
She goes, on his feet. I go, uh-huh, and where are they? And then she burst into tears again and said, they're at her home. I said, wherever his boots are, that's where he is. That doesn't mean anything except information for you to process. And it's not my place to say. So here's the deal. When we look at Nicole Kessinger, she had always been in second place. Here's someone that she knows is going, and that's her whole thing. I've got to get daddy away from mommy. And I can almost guarantee, and I don't know her story, but I can tell you there's something there between her mother and father and probably her father's parents. Because when I look at that energetically, there is something that's going on where Nicole goes into the situation and I guarantee she gets married men. She gets boyfriends that probably cheated on her. This is the first boyfriend that wasn't going to cheat on her. Now, the fact that he was a little simple may have something to do with it. And I say simple because I feel that we're looking at something here that's quite unique. And um, anyway, and I want to get back to that in a minute, the idea of, and I don't know the idea of, um, of being on any spectrums, but I can tell you right now that there's something where Chris in one sense is very simple and on the other sense, he's like a genius in certain areas. So there's something that doesn't connect in here. It's almost like that heart chakra just doesn't connect. He's connected from here down and from here up. So remember, he probably married Shanann in this area of like making a decision, seeing, you know, going, this looks good, right? In headspace, like it looks good. But down below, gut instinct, first chakra, grabbing what you want, he chose Nicole from that. And what I find is if there's a disconnect in that middle section, you're going to have trouble. So in the middle section, of course, is the green the heart chakra, because it's what we're open to. And I don't feel Chris had that ability. Let's look at the fact that Jody Arias does not have that ability. Look very closely here at the killers for a moment. Jody Arias and Chris Watts are extremely similar energetically. And I want you to breathe and just kind of feel into this with your own intuition for a moment. Let's look at the desperation that Jody displayed that afternoon. She had just had sex with Travis, taking photos. Now, what man is gonna let you take photos of him? Much like, and it was just odd, okay? But long story, she's taking these photos. He goes in the shower, she's got all his codes. She knows, this is snooper McSnoop and stuff, okay? She is McSnoop. She's going to go to that phone. She's going to open it up. She's going to read the texts. And that text saying, but you always said she was a skank or whatever that exact wording was. I think it was just the trigger, but it's kind of like, you know, my dad used to say, because I'd be, I'd be driving. I go, Papa, I'm hearing a lot of noise. There's noise in the car. He'd go, turn on the radio. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, well, if you're hearing it, it, it you know, you, you, it's going to be worse than if you don't hear it. I'm like, that makes no freaking sense. But he said, if you're looking for something, honey, you're going to find it. So what Jody was looking for was proof. She was looking for the reason. She wanted that inciting moment. She wanted that moment to flip out, right, and go after Travis. She wanted that. Why do you think she carried that gun there? Okay. Let's look at, at, at Chris Watts, right? When I said, did she? Okay, good. I think did I didn't say she killed Chris, <laughs> but anyway, so, and I'll talk about Nicole as well, but we're talking about the murders right now, the murderers. So now we look at Chris Watts and I'm not talking about anything he said, just energetically. If we step back from that and we look at he was looking for a reason to get rid of his family. He was looking for it, and it was like, let me put it this way. When most of us have a problem of some kind, when there's something you're trying to figure out, you go into your head and you go, gee, I, I don't know what to do about this, right? And sometimes we ruminate, <coughs> maybe, and we think about it and think about it and think about it. 
And we try to figure it out. And for me, that's a lot of the work I do with people is allowing that space with my own intuition and with the, you know, my, the God of my understanding to come into me and work with me on what is the right decision to make here. What happens is when someone has no capacity for frustration, they have no capacity. Now we can look at Jody, no capacity for frustration. When we look at, at Chris, right? Underneath everything, he was never, he was always protected. He was never exposed to real frustration. I want you to think about this for a minute. You know, the frustration of trying to figure something out because the truth is that everything he did, he was allowed to love what he was doing. So he loved auto mechanics. He was smart with this. He was Rain Man in the sense that he knew how to figure out everything in his world. He knew how to figure it out. He'd had a very exacting, you know, a friend of mine has a child has Alzheimer's, not, I'm sorry, Asperger's own brain, uh, Asperger's. And, and that child is fine if he knows exactly how everything is. If you move the furniture, there is hell to pay. So the reason I'm saying this is that as long as Chris was in the container of, of his zone of figuring things out, he was fine. The minute he got into a zone that was for him, now let's look at it this way, evil. He knew it was. He knew having sex with another woman, he's married, was wrong. He even she shared that. He knew it was wrong. So he knows it's wrong, but then he knows that he's going to be humiliated by it. Where did that come from? You know, where does, where does a boy learn that a woman is going to disapprove and it is going to destroy him? Often it's the mother. Okay, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into it too much, but I'm going to say that, right? So when we look at that, how does his capacity to solve this problem become the problem? His inability to resolve it, his only thought was get rid of them. Now, asking for a divorce, how he was lying to Nicole Kessinger, he was going, yes, we're separated. Now think about this. For him and Nicole Kessinger, he's saying to her, well, look at this. My wife, who is still my wife, has gone away for five weeks because we're doing a trial separation. All right. Then let me tell you something. As much as we can look at Nicole Kessinger as being not, you know, 100% like on the, on the track, we can also look at, you know, once she had enough of a, of a belief that he was going to leave his wife and it's like she's not there so that's pretty understanding right as soon as she had that it was green light in the sack we're doing this because it that was you know I'd, I'd look at that too and if he said to me my wife has gone away for five weeks um because we're in a trial separation now i would go oh okay that's nice i'm not going to your house i'm not dating you so good luck with everything that would be me but the thing to keep in mind here is that he kept saying yes. He kept saying yes and pushing his, his own boundary. Now, as he did that, this compartment that he was in, this compartment, didn't have the capacity. It's like Danger Will Robinson. He had no capacity for knowing how to resolve a problem like this. And when you have someone that has an inability to function on a lot of levels, and I can see that now, you know, think about, as I say, he was simple, you know, he just wanted a family and he didn't know what love really was. He didn't, I, I really believe that. I really believe when people say that, I'm like, I don't think he did, but I think he knew enough to kind of like have fun with it, but I don't think he really had an attachment to it, obviously, or he wouldn't have done what he did. So the detached part of him, right, was also, as I see it, outside of the box of his ability to deal with frustration. Now, bear with me. What do I mean by this? Well, if we look at the way our society is now, people are not able to disagree and survive. They get batshit crazy. They just go off the freaking rails. I can't, ah! and it's kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. Bring that down, okay? And I think what we're looking at here 
is that there is this inability to sit with frustration because that's a very frustrating thing. Now, when I say that, please, I'm not making it okay. But here's this guy who meets somebody and he's like, oh, I've got to get rid of her. But again, he couldn't make the decision. So he knew that the only way to make the decision was to make the decision. In other words, once it became permanent, there was no other way to change it. But you see, one of the things that happened, do you want to come say hi? All right. Oh, careful, buddy. Um, one of the things that happens when we look at something like that, that's Gavin, by the way, the, the fur that you see going by. Hi, Gav. Um, the, the thing, one of the things that happens in this case is that he has no capacity to sit with frustration, as most of us don't. But here's the funny thing. When I teach people their intuition, when I teach people to work with their intuition, I teach them that the only safe place is in that frustration because that's the unknown. That's the part you can allow God in. You can allow God to be in that frustration with you and say, I don't know what to do with this, God. You take it. And sometimes I'll just say, God, I don't know what to do. You know, give me an answer. Make it a billboard so I don't miss it. That's my big thing, you know. And you'd be surprised. I'd be, driving, I'd be so frustrated. I'd be driving down the road. And sure enough, I look up and it says, you know, breathe. And it's like some breathe strips or something. Dog, he's such a goofy. Um, it's one of those. Okay, I know. It's one option. Come here, Kevin. Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi to everybody? I know. I know. You're a sweet boy. I know. We're just going to sniff everything. Okay. So, it, you know, sometimes the best thing to do is to just let it go and allow the frustration to exist. But these people, a Jody Arias, Nicole Kessinger, and a Chris Watts are examples of people that never learn to work through frustration in their lives. And by the way, a lot of us haven't. You know, the idea of, of for me, growing up with the disease of alcoholism all around me, you know, I didn't learn how to work through frustration because frustration was like a rampant, you know, now, as I say that to you, no, don't, don't eat that tissue. Um, as I, as I say that to you, we want to also take a look at another element here, which is that we know, and let's look at what we do know. And I really want to go deeper into, I want to listen again to the Nicole tapes because we know that she was saying, oh, you know, I think he was more into it than me. I think that what gave her the charge was he's so into me. You see, she didn't have guys into her. She didn't have anybody into her. So when she gets somebody who was into her, she was able to use it. And then eventually she was going to start playing it. Now, when I say playing it, you know, the women, I don't know them personally, but um, <laughs> I might've done this in my youth, who pick a fight and then they make up and then they've got drama going on all the time. And it's like, you know, I think he like did this and it's just like drama, drama, drama. Well, drama happens when we forget who we are. And drama is a mask for that. So energetically, she's playing it like, oh, I don't care. But meanwhile, she's looking at wedding dresses. She's kind of getting into this fantasy of the fulfillment of her fantasy. Her fantasy is to get married to a great guy and live happily ever after, and she wants to give him a boy. Meanwhile, Chanel was pregnant with a boy. That's a different video. But when we look at this, when we look at this energy of an inability, an inability to recognize when something isn't yours, it's because of the level of frustration. Now, bear with me. You know, I can't tell you how many times, like I've seen somebody, I remember somebody, um, well, if you watch Judge Judy, but I remember somebody took a bike from a friend of mine and I said, isn't that so-and-so's bike? Cause the person was looking for it. And uh, he said, yeah, but he doesn't use it. I'm like, he's looking for it. And he said, oh, well, you know, he didn't use it. So I just took it. And I thought, that's not just entitlement. That is an inability to work through issues to get and earn what you have. So when we talk about, I think entitlement strips us of the opportunity to work through the frustration and get the personal reward of winning. Because the truth is that when we work through the crap, when we, when we struggle, when we go, I don't know how to handle this, and we just sit quietly with it, you know, 
that for me, and, and I did a whole thing on, uh, in one of my books, I talk about, actually, it's in this book, How to Read the Cards for Yourself and Others. It's actually funny because it's really not just about reading cards. It's really about how we are in the world. And one of the biggest things is the neutral observer helps me step back and go, oh, I'm in upset right now. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't have to do anything about it. I can look at something that someone has said about me or to me, and I can go, you know, that's interesting. I'm noticing, I'm observing that I'm really angry and upset and I'm freaked out about it. Hmm, interesting. But you notice how I'm not going, no, I have to do this. And I, it's more like, yeah, I'm getting this vibe that this is like really bothering me, but I don't know what to do with it. Let's now take that energy and put that on Jody Arias. Jody, again, was someone who wanted to belong. And I think if we look at the wounding, right, the wounding of these people, and you've heard me talk about this a little bit, our wounding is our greatest gift. It's always our greatest gift. So when we look at this, for example, Jody's greatest wounding is that she felt unwanted. She felt, she felt like people were, you know, her parents and going through her stuff and spying on her. And, and she just felt like, leave me alone. You're, you're bothering me, right? I am so sorry, you guys. What happens is when I'm reading or when I'm in an intuitive zone, my nose sometimes itches. And so people have been putting up these things. That means you're a liar. And it's like, bro, oh, stop. It just means my nose itches. So anyway, um, so Jody, itchy nose. Um, let me come back. Hold on. Okay. So Jody was feeling with her parents that they were spying on her. She felt she didn't belong in that family. Her mother even gave up a year of work to sit with Jody, but Jody never acknowledged that. Jody was never looking at what was done for her. It was really around the fact that she was desperately looking for her own place. Travis Alexander was the first man that really, I think, represented to her the perfect guy in the sense that he was everything that she could help. Now, I want you to bear with me. If her wounding is not belonging, what do you think her greatest gift was? Her greatest gift is going to be to help someone feel they belong or feel good or in a sense, lure them in, right? Because, and she used sex with Travis to really kind of go, oh, you're such the man. And you're, you know, this kind of like femme fatale kind of thing is more than just sex. It's more than just that energy. It has a lot to do with the idea that Jody didn't feel she belonged. And one of the things she was best at is kind of making people feel they're important. And that's a sales technique. Yes, it is. But it's also a technique and people can use it for, you know, clinical reasons. But we also have to look at what made her good at that is the deep wounds. So when we look at the similar wounding of, and I'll get to Kessinger in a minute, we look at the similar wounding of Travis Alexander you know, he gets to be out in the world. He's doing great things. He's looking good. He's got this facade, right? But he also is a good person. I don't want to take that away from him. It's just that when there's wounding in there, the wounding becomes a gift. The fact that his mother abused the heck out of him, he wanted to help people who were abused. That's a great thing. Jody wanted to belong so badly, she helped others feel they belonged and helped the downtrodden feel good about themselves. So when you look at the gentleness, bear with me, there is a sweetness to Jody Arias that's it's very deceiving. However, I want to be clear that these facades play a big role in the occurrence in the world and how our wounding becomes a gift. Now, we look at Nicole Kessinger, and I have to tell you, I think we are looking at a very similar thing because I'm going to say that if we put Nicole, in the same situation as Jody, I can pretty much say that I don't think she would have chosen Travis. 
And let's look at this for a minute. Wounding picks the right wounding. Remember I said, I don't know if you remember, but in the NK video, I talked about, you know, your um, combination, your love combination, and how she and uh, Nicole and uh, NK and uh, CW, Chris Watts, got together. It's because she unlocked that part of him that he had never explored. And for someone like Chris Watts, who is that sick, really, there was something very, very boxed and strange about him. I don't, I, you know, because he seemed so lovely. And he was, as long as he's in this. The minute she opened a different door, he didn't know how to, he had no basis of who he was because this was a part of him that he never explored, that he never knew. He probably never met the shadow side of his life. Now, if we look at that, everybody has a shadow. Oh, look, I do too. Um, everybody has a shadow side and, and everybody has that part of them that's like, um, that's really in upset a lot because it's the, it's the opposite of the, of the good you, so to speak. Now, I don't wanna get into that too much, but we look at what NK unlocked and that was her evil, if you will. That was her thing of like, in some ways, she, gosh, you put her and, and Jody together and you could see them both with their voices similar, the way they played men. And I'm going to say this, Jody Arias was much more, um, I want to say, seductive in some way because Jody at least was a, the, and please, this is not blaming anybody else and I'm not letting anybody off the hook, I'm going to be clear. Jody was playing it like, oh, you know, and I don't know, these ninjas came in. And Kessinger was like keeping the law enforcement officers hostage. Did you notice that? Jody was an emotional hostage. Kessinger takes hostage hostages. Now, when you're a hostage taker, what does that look like? Well, you could see those cops. It's like Pepe Le Pew. They're trying to get out of that room. They're going, okay, thanks for coming in again. You know, it's like, she's like, oh, but I have something to tell you about the third Thursday of the second day. And there was a string on the window and they're like, I'm, you know, they're like, get me out of this room. Kessinger was so desperate for attention that she's taking it from anyone. This is a woman who sucked the air out of the room. So does Jody. They both are like, my mother used to call them energy vampires, right? They're the ones who go like this. They go, and you're like, what happened? I feel like tired, <laughs> you know? It's just because you're going, oh my gosh, I can't listen. Now, Jodi Arias really is also an energy vampire, but she only does it when you get close to her. And Kay will do it to anybody to get, get them close to her. See, let's look at this for a minute. You saw NK in the interrogation rooms and she's going, oh, he did that, oh, ah, and you're going, ah, 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 ah. And, and even, the, even the Leos are sitting there going, you know, like, uh, okay, because it's kind of like she was acting out to act like someone that you would feel is so sympathetic. And, we can look at this and go, she is not sympathetic at all. You know, we, it's obvious she's not. But in her world, that idea of being sweet, that's her sweet. Somebody like Chris, who doesn't understand anything outside of this, he doesn't understand any, because he's just in this simple box. Somebody who's like, oh, you're so wonderful. You're so this, you're so that. And oh my gosh. And meanwhile, he's going, whoo, you know, because... I'm sorry, but the cannon's going up. You know, he is just like, I don't want this. So he is being reeled in by her conversation and her, her massaging him in a way, okay, in a way that's outside of this box. So Kessinger, what she was very good at, or when I say very good, that's her MO. She is, her thing is, I am going to seduce you by idle conversation that is either making me look like I can help you 
or helping you see that I'm really a good person and you need me. So if we look at both of these women, their need to be needed is huge. Now, Kessinger started to turn the tables with CW when she started to see that it was happening. Now, I think that her comment made much more sense to me later when she said his, his cheese slid off the cracker long before I came along. She saw who he was. Hi, Gav, we know. She saw who he was and she was working it. Now, here's the thing. I think it's kind of, all right, there's an old joke. Sorry, there's an old joke that my father used to tell about a bad theater, because I, I grew up in the theater. My dad was a, a Broadway actor. Yeah, you can go out. Um, he was a Broadway actor. And so he would say, there was a joke about the actress who comes in and says, uh, you know, who, does, who do I need to sleep with to get into this production? She, in, in theater, she sleeps with the stage manager. She gets a role in the, in the play. And then the next thing you know, the play's terrible. It's like this awful play. And then she sidles up to somebody else and says, who do I need to sleep with to get out of this? You know, so I think that what began to happen was Kessinger was desperately looking for a way out. Now, here's the thing. Whether it was because she's guilty or because she's just recognizing that she doesn't want him. Is this a wake-up call for NK? This is going to be the interesting thing. We're going to see that this woman either goes on the straight and narrow and like is, I'm going to tell you, she's either scared normal, <laughs> right? And I'm not kidding. Sometimes there's so many cray crazy out there, you kind of go, I, I'm scared normal. You know, and, and some women who behave badly, maybe I know one or two, you know, we, when I behave badly in the past, when I dealt with crazy, when I dealt, finally got a crazy guy in my life and I said, I behaved badly. He was like crazier than me. And I went, okay, this is, I'm going sane. You know, I was kind of insane off the wall before, but then I'm going sane. So when you find somebody who's crazier than you, sometimes it kind of kicks you into normal. So. What I'm saying is that NK, in this way, is either going to really straighten out because she's been scared straight, so to speak. She's been, you know, scared normal, or we're going to hear about something else she's done. And, you know, I, had, I can't tell you how many times I've seen things where, you know, the, the guy gets off for the crime and then, like OJ, you know, and then he goes to jail for like a gajillion years for like stealing a tulip. I mean, I'm, that's not what it is. But, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Oh, sorry. It's nothing but me hitting the, the light. <laughs> so I guess that's the truth. Um, anyway, what I'm saying is now we look at Jody Arias, and I really have to say that Jody, there was something wrong with her early on. She would apparently scream and carry on and cry and get her way. Now, Jody also found older men who took care of her. And even the guy she was with right before Travis, it was all about climbing. She was looking for the next thing. But I think that for her, the incredible spark, she became very addicted to Travis. Now here's, here's another is issue that I wanna bring up. Travis, and, you know, there's no nice way to say this, because I don't think he was a bad guy at all. But I think he was just a guy that had no idea about his own power. And when we look at the abuse he suffered at the hand of his mother, we can look at he doesn't think he has any real impact on women. So for him, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, you can come sleep with me. Yeah, you can come do this. And maybe it was playing with her. But I don't really think that Travis recognized the danger because he had lived with danger. You see, when someone lives with danger at that level, it's normal, you know? I mean, I think it's his mother that shot up his father's car. I mean, you know, her father shot, I think the father shot at the mother. The point I'm making is that that's normal. That's normal. Why would you think there's anything strange about, you know, someone who's just, you know, showing up in your living room, like, you know, who knocks at your door in the middle of the night? You wouldn't think anything of it because you grew up with that. Now, when we go over to look at NK and we look at Chris Watts, we can look at the idea of what they saw as normal, right? 
neither one of them had experienced and owned that level of, of if you will, sexual passion, uh, connection. I don't want to diss the connection because I'm, and I'm going to look at their chart later, but they had a connection. Okay. That said, you know, I'm sorry, boo boo. He, he's so low to sit on my papers because I have like a ton of paperwork. I'm just going to show you how sweet he looks right here. Can you, I don't know if you can see him. Can you see that boy? Look how sweet you are. It's just sweet pea. It's my little, little sweet pea. Um, so when we look at the connection here between them, we have to look at the idea that Nicole Kessinger really deeply is very wounded. And we're looking at it as, you know, on the outside, this is what I'm seeing a lot of people say anyway, as the idea of, wow, she's a liar, she was probably involved, I think she was there. Mm. Which is fine, all that may, be, may or may, may not be true. But I think what I'm looking at is the idea that she did lie. There was the, but she lied also in ways that reveal wounding. She revealed the fact that this relationship with her father, she was try desperately trying to prove that she could have a man of her own, that he would stay for her. And this happens sometimes to little girls. You know, if daddy leaves, it's one of those, I've got to get daddy back. And that can take years, if at all, to, to heal that wound. But here's the thing I want to say about it. A lot of people have these wounds. Most people don't resort to killing people. <laughs> what makes this, what makes Chris Watts a new kind of killer is that he was so, he was so under the radar in terms of a very, very good functioning empty shell. And I'm sure there's people who could say, oh, he's a great kid, he's a great guy, and I'm sure everybody could say that about the Watts family. But this has nothing to do with it. It has to do with what can we learn from this? Well, what we can learn is that when we have wounding, whatever that wounding is, the goal of our life here, and, and this is where a lot, you know, is to find inner peace. To, and I gotta tell you, you know, I'm at peace with the stuff that happened to me as a kid. I mean, I could tell you stories. You'd be like, holy crap, Tori, really? <laughs> you know, your hair stands on end. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with it. Yeah, I have my moments. Yeah, I'm like angry person. You know, and somebody said um, to my dad, you know, your daughter's kind of angry. My dad probably looked at him and said, who isn't? So I think the thing is, is that it's about accepting yourself, right? And accepting who you are and how you are. Somebody like Chris had too many taboos on him to such a pressure. He was an adulterer. How do you think that would look to his mother and father? He was a cheater. He was, and I don't mean just that, I mean cheating in other ways. He just did so many strange things that you, you have to look at this and go, there was, as, as Nicole Kessinger said, his cheese slid off that cracker long before I met him. Now, wait a minute. Let's look at this for a minute. Nicole Kessinger got a chance to see that he wasn't well. And I want you to look at that for a minute. Think about this. If you were in her shoes, I'm not saying you are, but if you were in her shoes, I don't know about you, but if I was, okay, and I'm looking at this and I'm going, if I saw that crazy come out, I would be like, oh, what did I miss? What am I not seeing in my own life? What am I missing? Because the truth is, that's your mirror, kiddo. So the truth is that Nicole is Chris, and Chris is Nicole, and the reason Chris could never see himself in Shanann, and he always felt uncomfortable about, around Shanann, is because he never saw himself because she was truthful. She was a genuine person. And all he had to do was pretend that he was the same as her. And then we can begin to see how that happens. Now, as we look at this, and I'll be talking about Jody Arias more, and I'm going to be talking, I have other crimes that I want to be talking about as well, but I want to also connect the dots. So it's not just like leaving you out in the cold. Everybody wants to know why. Well, 
you know, sometimes, sometimes in, in, in these cases is that why is going back to the inability to sit with any frustration. We're not teaching people how to sit with frustration and upset. We're not acknowledging the upset. We're not saying, you know what? I just want to let you know, you have every right to be upset. You really do. And I see the upset and I just want you to know it's real. I'll never forget. I was on, I was doing a radio show. This is a number of years ago. I had a blog talk radio show. I think it's still up somehow, but years ago I had the show and I, a woman came on the air and she was, she was talking about something. She was, Oh, I know what it was. was, She was talking about her business. And she said, I don't know. I can't seem to get another, another job. My career's derailed. And and I just listened and I listened for a minute and I just said, may I tell you what I'm hearing and seeing? And she said, yeah. I said, I just want you to know that I really get that you loved people who really didn't love you back in the way you needed. And it really is hard to forgive ourselves for loving people who didn't love us back. And so what we're really looking at here as a bigger conversation is the idea that we have to forgive ourselves for loving people that are bad to us. And so even if we look at these circumstances of people who commit crimes, they go to jail, right? I mean, not all, but most of them we hope. They are living on that other side and they know jail. They know what it looks like, prison. They know what it looks like. And I think that we have that culture of the inability to contain your feelings. And I think we've seen it in the past. This is why, to be honest with you, I don't think I have like anybody I'm following anymore on Facebook because I can't listen to anything. I can't listen to all the political crap. Not because I'm not interested, not because I don't have an opinion, but it's because how many people do you know you've convinced to think else, other things on Facebook? I mean, come on. And it just becomes I can't sit with my feelings, so I'm going to spit on you. Yeah, well, I'm going to spit on you. Well, I'm going to spit on you. And pretty soon, we're having a conversation that has nothing to do with the issue. The issue is an inability to sit with my upset. So when we look at Nicole Kessinger and we look at Jodi Arias, we look at people that have no idea of, if, if we look at it, what they are fighting, what they're trying to accomplish. Now, I say this because if you remember, Chris Watts said on July 4th, now he said he was at his house, and then he says he's at her house. I don't know which place they were, but they were together that morning. When he goes outside to talk to his wife, he comes back in and and Kay says, well, you know, um, apparently she, he said he had to talk her down. You know, she probably freaked out. You see, these are the tantrums that are starting. Now you need to prove how much you love me. You know, I know you're going to leave your wife. So what? How much do you love me? And, and you see, the more that energy, okay, that Arius energy, if you will, starts to push on Chris into that box, he doesn't know how to resolve it, but he knows that he has to be there to help her, right? However, he's never dealt with this level of wounding. Because even with Shanann, Shanann was kind of like, you know, she was, she had her stuff, but they, I don't see deep emotional damage in Shanann. I see it in Kessinger. And you see, this was way over Chris's head. And I think that if we look at it that way, we can begin to see that Chris did try to get into a very structured thing, but he couldn't and he got pulled back. Now, meaning a a good situation with Shanann. Um, Now, as we look at this, her tantrum on July 4th told me everything I needed to know because that particular tantrum is a huge clue because then she says, well, don't come back. I'm going to go out with friends. I don't need you. Meanwhile, she's saying, please come over later, which is very typical of, of someone who's a hostage taker. They can't be alone because it's too painful to be alone. They have, you have to constantly, and she would be constantly probably upping the ante. How much do you love me? Show me, I'm gonna give, look at how much I've given you. You know, and he, 
as someone who needs to mirror, he just keeps thinking he has to give and give and give. And he even said in that, in the interview, in the um, February 18th interview, 17, 18th, um, he even says, um, how was it, how was it he put it? Um, he said that he used his credit card that last time and he really wished that uh, she had paid. Now what's interesting there is that she, he kept paying for her. He kept paying for her. But when him, by him saying, bear with me, by him saying that he wished she had paid, that's beginning to tell you how she was, she was sucking the marrow out of his bone. All right. And I want to tell you, this was a disaster waiting to happen. And I'm going to tell you, if he had left Shanann and the kids and married her, I think ultimately he might have done her in. Because you see, the pressure that this guy was feeling, it was way outside of his box. He did not know how to deal with it. And I think it would have blown and blown and blown and expanded. The thing that I get a headache over is, and, and I just don't understand, is that you know, I just keep feeling I wish he had just let the children go. Even if he let them, you know, dropped them at the police station, you know, with a note on them and said, I don't, you know, daddy doesn't want me. Or, you know, he could have called his in-laws at any time and said, listen, you need to come get the kids. You know, um, the problem is they'd seen him. There was all that kind of stuff. But anyway. There's a lot more I can say in these similarities, but I think I've said enough today kind of to kind of get you thinking about some of these things. A lot of the concepts I'm talking about are, are just layman's terms. These are my, this is my way is when I work through things and when I look at my intuition and when I look at pulling a card, for example, what it's about for me is tapping into my internal wisdom and what I already know to be true for me. Uh, I think that one of the things that happens is that people try to push their agenda on others and it's gotten so outrageous now that that is why on this channel I say, say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. Because you see, if you're in upset and you don't like what I'm saying, look at the feeling you're getting from it because it's, it means it's igniting a feeling that you're uncomfortable with or you want to address. And that's fine. And it's perfectly fine for me to say, hi, you know, I'm thinking of Do uh, Dolly, you know. I'm thinking, hi, Dolly. You know, what you said has really triggered this in me and it makes me so mad. And I want to just address that I'm so uncomfortable with this part of this conversation. So that then it, it's an open conversation. It gives me a chance to say, you know, or for her to say, oh, wow, yeah, I can see how that would trigger. That would, yeah, that makes sense. If I say, you know, you're wrong, this isn't the way it is. And if I start condemning what she's written or what she says to me, it's a closed conversation. And you see, I think that we're, what we're craving here in this world is we're craving connection. And the only way to connect is by really having that openness, right? And intimacy is into me see. It's not something you're gonna get from somebody else, it's something you are. And there are people who hate me, and there are people who love me, oh my God, there are people, you know, and here's what I wanna say. It's because it's into me see. You can see who I am, you, you see who I am, and you like it or you don't. But one of the things that, that is happening is that you're experiencing that, as a safe place because people who are truly intimate in the world are safe people to be around and that's the difference is that I believe as I look at this Shanann Ruschek was an intimate person you were able to see who she was even if you didn't like it right because people oh she was hawking or whatever you saw who she was and she was loved for that and I think we're all looking for being ourselves. And just remember, you can't take someone else's pulse to see how you're feeling. So if you need to attack someone else, that's in you. 
because that attack, and believe me, hello, I've done it. I've mouthed off to a few people. I'm not, listen, see this? That's the only halo you're going to see on my head. <laughs> okay, that's it. Halo. Okay, so the point I'm making is that we are in this community. My intention is that we together, one person at a time, raise our personal consciousness. You know, there were years and years and years I wanted to change the world. I wanted to be the one who changed the world. And then one day I woke up and went, you know, I'd really just like to leave the room with dignity. So I hope that just some of these, and by the way, these are like popping tops. We've popped some tops, right? So we have like four different sodas to try here. And the idea is that some may be for you, some may not be for you. Take what you like and leave the rest. You know, if it's not something you agree with, it's perfectly fine to say, you know, this really triggered me and here's what's going on with it. And I don't like what you said. Perfectly fine. When you turn around and say, I hate you, you're an idiot, you're stupid, because when you said this, that's just lazy conversation. Come on. Are you going to have that lazy conversation the rest of your life, or are you going to have real intimacy? You're going to have that real connection with somebody else. You're going to have that real friendship. Are you going to have that reality that's better than any fantasy? And there you have it. So I know somebody uh, wrote in to me and said, okay, what's the nail polish? Uh, this week it is Essie. Nail polish of the week is Essie. And guess the color. A couple things I want to say. Please subscribe if you like what I'm saying. And if you really like what I'm saying also, please give it a thumbs up. That is so important, by the way, to YouTube channels. The thumbs up or a thumbs down is, if you don't like it, just go, you know. But what I want to say is, please tell us your opinion, you know, up or down. What I'd like to really hear from you also is where, you know, where you see yourself being in open conversation and where you're challenged with closed conversations and how you may be able to bridge that gap. For my um, Patreon, I always want to say Pat, Patreon, okay. Patreon people, um, I want to let you know I'm going to be doing a, a piece specifically about open and closed communication, but I kind of feel like that should just be on there. And please join me over there if you want. It's just, right now, it's just five bucks a month and it's really for, to keep him in. Look at that board boy. Do you want a greenie? See? Do you want them to give you greenies? All right. He wants more greenies. So thanks to those who've joined me so far. I'm looking to grow that community so we can be, and I'm looking to grow our community. I don't want to minimize your participation here. Please, please, please remember on the about up above, those are ways to get my work. Behind me is my new tarot deck that's coming out in a few weeks. You can pre-order on Amazon. And I am really, I'm really blessed that you're here. And I really honor everyone of all faiths and all walks of life. And I'm honored that you've given me the time to be with you today. So please, please, please tell me what you think below. I'm getting truth bumps. Love you all. And I will be doing some premieres so that way we can interact with each other while the video is running. And with that, have a wonderful, blessed afternoon, evening, or night. And remember, you are someone else's miracle.